Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new MSI GF65 Thin Gaming Laptop. Now you may have noticed that this looks exactly the same as the 2019 model, and that's because it is. It's identical. The chassis, the screen, they're exactly the same as before. But now it's available with an NVIDIA RTX 2060 that's up from the GTX 6060 Ti before for the same price, £999. That's actually really good value. I mean, a full fat RTX 2060, not a Max-Q version, the 6-core i7-9750H processor, and a 120Hz IPS display, for just under a thousand. So the main compromises are that, you know, it's not an ultra thin, super sexy gaming laptop necessarily. And also the base spec only comes with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, which frankly isn't enough. And I'll come back to that in a second. And it does have some stiff competition. Plus the upgrade to the RTX 2060 really only offers around a 10% performance gain in most games. Although it does unlock extras like ray tracing and DLSS. So first of all, this is unmistakably a gaming laptop. It's pretty chunky and everything is red, but MSI have done a good job at giving it a more premium feel with the brushed metal finish, no crazy RGB, and actually weighing just 1.86 kilograms or 4.1 pounds, it's surprisingly lightweight for a 15.6 inch gaming laptop. Although don't forget, you've also got this fairly hefty 740 gram power supply to go with it. There's a little flex in the screen and at the back of the keyboard, plus the top and bottom bezels are quite chunky. But overall, it's pretty decent looking. My main complaint though is it picks up smudges, grease marks, and fingerprints incredibly easily. I'm not a particularly dirty person if I do say so myself, but even a few minutes after unboxing this, I had my greasy paw prints all over it. I do really like the keyboard and touchpad though. It's well spaced out, you get a good amount of travel, and you can also set the keyboard's backlight to any color you want, as long as it's red. You actually can't change that, but it's par for the course with MSI's more budget range of laptops. The precision-enabled touchpad is also very nice to use, although the clicks feel a little bit spongy, but most of the time you'll be using a mouse for gaming. And with that budget, slightly more affordable theme in mind, there's also no face unlocking or fingerprint readers, so you have to unlock it with your PIN or your password, you know, like a peasant. <laughs> Peasants who have a thousand pounds to spend on a gaming laptop, that is. There's also a good range of ports, and it's nice to see a couple of USB-Cs there, although neither support Thunderbolt 3, unfortunately. Also, the placement can be a bit annoying sometimes when you've got the power coming out of one side, and then maybe your wired mouse or any other peripheral using the USB-A port on the other side, which also then sticks out into the area I'm using my mouse. I might just have to get a good Bluetooth gaming mouse instead. So the one thing that you really want in a new gaming laptop, aside obviously from good performance, is a high refresh rate display. It's pretty common now actually, and the GF65's 15.6 inch 120Hz IPS display does a good job. Now, it's not going to win any awards, and I wouldn't edit a professionally color accurate video on it, but despite the average brightness and fairly poor color accuracy, to my eye, it still looks good, and with a 120Hz refresh, it's absolutely fine for gaming. Alright, let's talk performance, and actually, straight away, I had a bit of a problem here. That's because this review sample, which is the £999 version, the base spec of the GF... Uh, of the what? Of the GF65, only has 256 gigs of storage, and only about 218 of that is actually usable. Which is the most frustrating thing in the history of the world. I could only install three or four recent games. In fact, I had to fully reset Windows to have enough room for Call of Duty, which requires a ridiculous 180 or so gigs. So you could pay a bit more for a spec with more storage, or what I recommend, just upgrade it yourself. It's really easy to open, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver, and with the plastic bottom chassis removed, you can see there's two M2 SSD slots, and only one of them is being used. So I would probably go and buy a 512 gig one for about £70 and upgrade it. It's also only using one of the two RAM slots. I'd buy another stick and double it. But sticking with the base spec for now, and here's the results from a few benchmarks if you're into that sort of thing. In terms of throttling, I ran 3D Mark Time Spy three times in a row, and the results were the same every time, so we're not seeing any GPU throttling. But doing the same again in Cinebench R20 to stress the CPU, it did drop by 10%, with temperatures occasionally hitting 99, so it can't sustain its maximum turbo boost for long. But despite the loud fans, I still found that the top of the keyboard reached 49 degrees Celsius, so it did get quite hot. Although fortunately, the WASD keys and touchpad stayed comfortable to use. Okay, let's jump into some games, and at 1080p with high settings, we're looking at a range from 55 FPS on average in Battlefield 5 to 137 in Siege. Now with a few tweaks to the graphics options, we could easily push BF5 into the 60s and 70s. And while we're not fully taking advantage of that 120Hz refresh in most games, except in Siege or other less demanding games, it's still worthwhile over a standard 60Hz screen. 
Wolfenstein Youngblood is interesting though, as it's one of just a handful of games to support both ray tracing and Nvidia's new DLSS 2 tech. I actually posted a video all about DLSS 2 a few days ago and how I think it has the potential to transform games. But a 75 FPS average between the two benchmarks with ray tracing and DLSS is pretty incredible for an RTX 2060. Now unfortunately I don't have the 2019 model here with the GTX 1660 Ti to directly compare it to, but you can expect as I say a fairly minor 5-10% speed boost. But every little helps, and while I wouldn't recommend enabling ray tracing without DLSS as it will halve your frame rate, considering this is the same price as the outgoing GF65, we're basically getting more for our money. Battery life is fairly poor though in my experience, with light use I got just about 3.5 hours, although obviously you want to plug it in for gaming. Speakers are decent though, but a pair of headphones is recommended to drown out the fan noise. So I think the GF65 offers a good balance. It may not be the sleekest or the sexiest or indeed the fastest, uh, but if you want a good gaming laptop for you know a grand or just under, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck. And if you do make a couple of smart upgrades yourself, you could actually turn this into a really powerful gaming laptop. This really is one of the cheapest RTX 2060 gaming laptops that you can buy. But what about you? Would you be tempted to buy one of these or do you have your eye on a different gaming laptop? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, a thumbs up or a sub would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.